Success is everything. Here's how you can be successful in your spoken English. Hey, I'm Roy from Speakingly. In this video, you'll learn 10 easy to use English success phrases that will absolutely accelerate your spoken English. Stick around to the end of the video to learn a unique idiom. You've worked hard, you've put in the hours, and now you're better. You've come a long way. You've improved and you got better at doing something. The origin of this phrase describes a journey covered or a great distance covered. Today we use it to describe progress and it's a great way to recognize how far someone has come. How can we use it in a sentence? I remember when he started working at the new company. He had absolutely no experience. But look at him now. He's come a long way and has become a department head managing hundreds of people. I used to hate going to the gym, but now, after months of hard work, I've come a long way. I go around the gym and go back home. Wait, is that a success? Yes, it has to be. Warning! I just want to say, no animal were hurt writing this idiom. To kill two birds with one stone. A situation where you can achieve two goals with one action. You can trace the phrase back to ancient Greece. They used a similar phrase to describe hunting skills. Today, it's commonly used in daily conversation to address efficiency. I need to get groceries and pick up a package. I think I'll kill two birds with one stone, and I'll just go and get both of them right after this video. I'm being efficient. I'm not wasting time by going after two videos. I'm doing it just after one. I'm going to jog to the gym instead of driving. <laughs> jog. Uh, yeah, uh, that way I'll get some exercise and save money on gas, killing two birds with one stone. Well, and that's why I stopped going to the gym, isn't it? You want to show people that you have done an amazing job at something. You're living up to their hopes, their expectations. It describes an act meeting expectations and with someone's abilities to achieve something. It's used in situations where someone has high hopes or high standards for someone or something. It's believed to have come from the world of performance, where actors and musicians have to live up to the audience's expectations. I was so nervous about meeting my girlfriend's parents for the first time. Luckily, they were really nice and welcoming. I was able to live up to their expectations. I expected a lot of my daughter and her performance not only lived up to my expectations, but utterly exceeded them. Here's something positive. Getting back on your feet and succeeding. To make a comeback. To describe a person, a team or a thing that has returned to success after a period where they weren't doing so well or had setbacks. We see it used a lot in sports and entertainment, but you can use it in other situations where someone has overcome adversity. The origins can be traced back to the world of theatre where performers would return to stage after being gone for a period of time. Let me give you an example from real life. John Travolta wasn't doing very well after his early years of success. Luckily, he got a role in Tarantino's super mega hit Pulp Fiction. Travolta made a comeback and reminded everyone what an amazing actor he was. Or this one. How many times has your favourite team been nearly out in an important game? And you thought, that's it, they're done. But then, at the last minute, they made a massive comeback and won the game. It's tough to watch. But that feeling when they win, wow, that's worth it. Let's say you want to get a specific job or you want to start something, but there's a selection process. You want to make the cut, used in context of a competition or selection process. You're meeting a standard or a criterion. The phrase is used commonly in sport or performing arts to describe a choice, an election, or a specific preference for a role or position. I've been practicing for my audition for a week. And I really hope I make the cut for this one. What? Why are you looking at me like that? I can be a lead in the film. I mean, look at this face. Okay, another example. The company has a strict hiring standard. But I think 
I have what it takes to make the cut. I've got the right qualifications and the experience. When you want to talk about someone who's succeeded in an exam or specific field, not really exceptional, you'd want to say with flying colors. A wonderful way to describe someone's efforts and achievements. They've done something amazing. We use it in academic or professional settings where someone has exceeded expectations. We think it comes from the world of naval signaling, where ships would fly flags to signal others of performance or status. When talking about academic success, you'd say he passed the exams with flying colors. He got the highest grades in class. The team completed the project with flying colors and impressed the client with their attention to detail and creativity. We find ourselves in difficult situations all the time. It's how we deal with these situations that makes a difference. To rise to the occasion, to describe someone that has met a challenge or a difficult situation with great success. It's used when someone overcomes obstacles or performs under pressure. It's believed the phrase comes from the world of military strategy, where commanders would have to constantly adapt to changing situations and make incredible decisions. Imagine this. You need to present to an audience and the power goes out. How would you deal with that? When the power went out during her presentation, she rose to the occasion and delivered a great speech without any visuals or a microphone. Argentina was down in the final minutes of the game, but they rose to the occasion and won the World Cup. I think you should rise to the occasion and click those like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss any other video. Have you wanted to be the hero and save the day? Bruh. It described someone that has rescued a situation from failure or disaster. It's used in situations where someone has to act really fast to prevent something bad from happening. I mean, we see it all the time in movies, describing heroic actions like in war movies or superhero movies where everyone is saved at the last minute. What about real life? The specialist saved the day by restoring the company's data after a cyber attack. I have a feeling that happens quite a lot. Superman saved the day by pushing a large asteroid from destroying the planet. Do you know how many asteroid movies there have been? A lot. Let's see if you know these. Third time lucky or third time the charm. Situation where someone has succeeded after failing, well, twice. When someone had to push hard to succeed after setbacks. It's believed this phrase comes from the world of superstition where the number three was considered very, very lucky. Here's one that happens everywhere. He failed his driving test twice, but on the third try, he passed. Third time the charm. After two failed business ventures, I started a third company and it turned out to be a huge success. Third time lucky, but it's probably more like four or five, but we'll call it three. I really want you to be a confident and fluent English speaker. And I believe where there's a will, there's a way to achieving your goals. Where there's a will, there's a way. It's used to encourage to push forward in an effort to achieve something. The origin of the phrase is traced back to the 19th century, which was used in a poem to encourage effort. I know it's a difficult project, but where there's a will, there's a way. Let's keep pushing forward and find a solution. I know, I know, it's hard to learn a new language. But you need to remember, where there's a will, there's a way. And you will become fluent in no time. If you want to learn more idiom, jump to the video coming up. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time.